And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of Don't Revenge. He let him stay out there in the freezing cold, pounding on the door and yelling, let me in. But Rose's daughter tried to let him in, but the old man wouldn't let her. So Jeff stayed there in the freezing cold, and the girl heard him say, I'll make you pay for this, Monroe. For as long as Monroe lives, I'll make you pay. And that's the end of the story? Yeah, not by a long shot, young fella. Ever since that time, people have died who stayed in that cabin. People up here say they've heard him pound on the door and yell, Now let me in. And when they do let him in, they die. Real strange like they die. The Hall of Fantasy will present Stone's Revenge in just a moment. And now for our story an original tale of fantasy entitled Stone's Revenge. <laughs> Jim Loring was my best friend. His sister Betty more than my friend, for we were set to be married the following November. We'd all been working pretty hard, and we figured we needed a rest, so we took a two-weeks vacation and headed up north. Before we left the city, Jim rented a cabin from a real estate broker about 400 miles north of here. We left about three in the morning and drove steadily. Hey, what uh, time is it? Uh... 11.30. Oh, we've made good time. Yeah, that's right. According to the last marker we saw, we ought to be pulling into Wood Lake in a few minutes. How far is the cabin from town, Jim? Well, Gehring, the real estate man, said it was about six miles out of town. You're uh, sure he said there were fish in that lake? <laughs> Some of the best fishing in the state. That's what he said. <laughs> that's what they all say. <laughs> we'll have to stop in town and pick up plenty of food. Yeah, that's right. Enough to hold us for a few days, anyway. Oh, look, up ahead. I think we're coming to it. Oh, we are. It says, uh, you see, a wood lake, population 709. Hey, big oh, town. You better slow down. You know these small towns. Yeah. The broker in the city said I could get the key to the cabin from the sheriff. It seems he also owns a store here, Sheldon's General Store. Well, if that's the case, we might as well pick up our food there. Yeah, might as well. Hey, look, there it is. Huh? Oh, oh yeah, I see it. Oh, open that door in a hurry. I... I just hope my muscles haven't frozen in this position. Oh, that <laughs> oh, feels great. Oh, oh boy. Beautiful day, isn't it? Weather report said we're in for a storm tonight, though. Oh? Well, maybe it'll blow over by tomorrow. Oh, it's nice and cool in here. Yeah. Anything would be cool after driving in that hot sun. Oh, it doesn't seem to be... Oh, yes, there he is, leaning back in that chair with a paper over his face. Look. <laughs> He's sound asleep. Pretty alert fellow, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. I heard that, young fella. <laughs> I was only joking. <laughs> Don't you worry, none, son. I can take a joke as well as the next one. <laughs> uh, you'd be wanting something, maybe? Uh, yes, we uh, rented a cabin up here, and we need some food. And you come to the right place. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, what can I do you for? Uh... You'd better take charge here, Betty. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's see. We'll need some eggs. Uh, about two dozen. Coming eggs. right up. Yeah. You come in fresh this morning? Uh, where are you staying? Oh, the old Monroe place. A real estate man in the city said we could pick up the key from you. Yep. Yep, I got the key. All right. Yeah, what else, ma'am? Well, uh, let's see. Some bacon, a pound of coffee... Pancake flour, Pancake flour, potatoes, potatoes oranges, oranges, some cream, sandwiches. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on, ma'am. I got what you said, but don't say no more, because if you do, I'll forget everything. <laughs> 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 so you're staying at the old Monroe place, huh? That's right. Uh, let's see now. Coffee, flour. You got a five-pound sack of potatoes here. Oh, that'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, go over there and help yourself to some oranges, ma'am, and anything else you see. Just pick it up and set it on the counter here. Hmm? All right. I, I guess that will be the easiest way. Yeah. yeah. 
Hmm, so you're staying at the old Monroe place, huh? Uh, you uh, said that once before. Yeah, I know I did, I know I did. You just wanted to be sure it was hearing right. Well, your hearing's all right, Sheriff. Uh, by the way, may we have the key? Sure enough, sure enough. It's right here under the counter. No. Yeah, long time since that cabin's been rented. Oh? How come? Eh, people just don't like to go up there. Oh, why not? Anything wrong with it? Not exactly. Still the best cabin around these parts. Got a nice refrigerator. <laughs> Indoor plumbing. Real nice place. But uh, you oughtn't to go up there. Why? Because of old Jeff Stone. People around here say they've seen him up there. Oh, he won't bother us. Eh, don't you count on that, young fella. Look, if he comes around the cabin, we'll ask him to leave. Only leaving that'll be done. It'll be done by you. Well, why? Is he dangerous? Yeah, yeah, he's dangerous. And he's dead, too. What do you mean? Just what I said. Well, you can't expect us to believe... I don't that. expect you to believe nothing. I'm just telling you what I know for a fact. The real estate man didn't say anything he's about... He's only interested in renting it. Now, you listen to what I got to say. So I don't think... Let him talk, Jim. Thank you, thank you. I'll tell you about what happened up there. About 15 years ago, it was. Old man Monroe hated Jeff Stone. Used to make life miserable for Jeff. And Jeff used to come in here and say that he was going to get even someday. And the hatred inside him would come out on the surface. And it even made me afraid. It was the winter time when it happened. Old man Monroe was in his cabin and there was a big storm outside. One of the worst we ever had up here. His daughter was with him. She was the one who told me what happened. <clears throat> Jeff got himself caught outside in that storm. He knew the only place he could reach was old man Monroe's cabin. So he fought his way through the blizzard, and he got to the cabin half froze. Yeah, he pounded on the door. Let me in! Let me in! Old Monroe knew it was Jeff outside. He wouldn't open that door. He let him stay out there in the freezing cold, pounding on the door and yelling, Let me in! Let me in! Well, Monroe's daughter tried to let him in, but the old man wouldn't let her. So Jeff stayed out there and froze to death. But just before he stopped yelling, the girl heard him say... I'll make you pay for this, Monroe. For as long as Monroe lives, I'll make you pay. Yes, sir. In the morning, when the storm was over, they went outside and found him frozen to death. And that's the end of the story? Yeah, <laughs> not by a long shot, young fella. Ever since that time, people have died who stayed in that cabin. First Monroe's daughter, then him, and then others. Anybody who went up there. People up here say they've heard him pounding on the door and yelling, Let me in! Let me in! And when the folks in the cabin let him in, they die. Real strange-like. They die. We'll return to the Hall of Fantasy in the tale of Stone's Revenge in just a moment. Back now to the Hall of Fantasy in the tale of... Stone's Revenge. The sheriff leaned across the counter as he spoke to us. Even though the day was warm, I could feel a chill creep over me as he told us the story of one man's revenge. So I wouldn't go up there if I was you. Uh, certainly a frightening story. Yep, sure is. Is there any other cabin around here for rent? Yeah, it's been a busy season up here. Most of the place has got people living in them. I got a place, though, I could let you have. Not too bad a place. Let you have it mighty cheap. Maybe we ought to... Nonsense. Work. No, we'll go up to the cabin. Well, it's all right with me. Well, I think that about does it, Sheriff Sheldon. All right, let me see now. Ninety-five for coffee, fifty-seven for bacon. Our uh, eggs. You sure we have everything we need? Well, as long as you two manage to catch a few fish, we have. If you don't, then we'll be making quite a few trips into town. Wait till we get out in the boat. Ha! Huh? I'll wait until I get the fish into the pan. Yeah, it comes to eleven dollars and ninety-two cents. You can check my figures if you want to. Oh no, we trust you, Sheriff. Here. Yep, out of twelve. <laughs> yes, me. Always good to have a little business on the side, like this here store. Here's your change. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Uh, you, look, you're sure you don't want to go to my cabin, huh? Oh, we're sure. Well, I warned you, warned you, you're walking in with your eyes open. I hope you walk out that way. <laughs> that is, alive.
certainly is far enough away from everybody. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing we have a map or we'd be lost. Hey, look, I can see it. Huh? Yeah, hey, so do I. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Oh, and there's the lake. Oh, it's beautiful. Hey, can I pick him or can I pick him? Oh. This lake is so hard to get to that I, I bet it hasn't been fished much. I could hardly wait to get out there. They ought to be hitting pretty well this afternoon, huh? We'll get the boat off the trailer and whip that lake to a froth. Jim. Mm-hmm. I heard that story that the sheriff was telling you. You don't think there was any truth to it, do you? Of course not. You notice when he finished, he said he had a place that we could rent. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> well, I did. He just wanted to talk us out of coming up here. Always good to have a little business on the side, he said. I wonder how many people he's talked out of coming up here with that crazy story of his. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a few, I suppose. But it, it did frighten me. We found the cabin to be in excellent condition. We moved our things in, had a bite to eat, then Jim and I unloaded the boat and went fishing while Betty took a sunbath on the beach in front of the cabin. The big ones weren't hitting, but the panfish were. And when we came in, we had a stringer full of bluegills, crappies, and perch. Betty fixed dinner, and we had all the fish we could eat. The rest of the evening, we took it easy, listening to the radio we'd brought with us or reading. The weather report was right that day. And a little after nine o'clock, it began to rain. Hey, we're right about the rain. Yeah, sounds like it'll be a good one. I hope we don't have rain the whole time we're up here. That would be just our luck. Hey, who turned off the radio? I did. Nobody seemed to be listening to it. Well, put it on, will you? Oh. I want to catch the rest of the news before I turn in. If we're uh, going to get up early tomorrow, we'd better think about turning in. Yeah, we'll hear the news and then call it a day. Okay. And that's the news of the world and the national scene. As for the local news, there's... Ladies and gentlemen, a bulletin has just been handed to me. Lawrence Graham, an inmate of the State Institution for the Criminally Insane, escaped from the grounds a little more than two hours ago. So far, he has not been apprehended. His description follows. Six feet tall, gray hair and brown eyes. Last seen wearing gray shirt and pants. This man is dangerous. If you see him, on no account, try to apprehend him, but get in touch with the local police of your area immediately. I repeat, this man is dangerous. Be very careful. Turn it off, Betty. The state hospital is for the criminally insane. That's pretty close to us. I think it's about... Five or six miles away. Oh, they'll catch you. Don't worry about it. He won't get away. I hope so. Well, I think I'm going to turn in. Listen. What's the matter? I I heard something. So did I. A crash of thunder. No, something else. I, I thought I heard a voice. Oh, nonsense. Maybe you're right. Maybe. There it is again. I heard it, too. Yeah, so did I. We'd better take a look outside. Yeah, all right. No, d don't go outside. We'll just stand in the doorway and see if there's anything out here. Huh? Do you see anything? No. Nothing. Then come back inside. Yeah. All right. Maybe it was someone lost in the storm. Uh, or maybe it was the man who escaped. Or Jeff Stone. <laughs> Is out there. Yes, there is something out there. We'd better go see what it is. All right, I'll... Let me in! He's outside the door. Let me in! Come on, let's see who it is. Okay. Let me in. Oh, I'm glad I found you here. What's the matter with him? I found him lying on the ground about half a mile from here. I've been carrying him ever since. Here, let me help you. Put him down over here. All right. That uh, 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 does it. What's wrong with him? I don't know. He, uh, he doesn't seem to... What's the matter with him? He... He's dead. You are listening to the tale of Stone's Revenge on this week's journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy. We'll return to our story in just a moment. And now, back to our story, entitled, Stone's Revenge. The storm was getting worse. Outside, thunder roared and the rain fell in torrents. Inside, we turned to look at each other, for a dead man was lying on the couch. Are you 
you sure? There's no pulse. He's dead. Was he dead when you found him? No. Then he must have died while you were carrying him. Yes. Storm's pretty bad. You'd better stay here until it blows itself out. Thanks. Gordon. Yes? Come over here a minute. All right. What do you want? Don't talk so loud. Do you see his clothes? Whose? Well, not the dead man. What's so different about them? Gray shirt and slacks? Remember the broadcast? Gray shirt and slacks. Six feet tall with gray hair and brown eyes. Well, that man fits the description of the one that they put out the warning about. Hmm. What do you think we should do? I don't know. The announcer said he was dangerous. But it might not be him. What if it is? Hey, uh, what are you two talking about? Uh, uh, we, uh, we were wondering if you'd like, uh, uh, something to eat, sir. No. You, uh, you live around here? At one time. Do you, uh, know who he is? I remember the face very well, but the name escapes me. What, uh, your name? I'd rather not say. <clears throat> well, um... Why don't you drive into town and, and get some cigarettes, Gordon? But we have... Uh, yes, we, uh, we're almost out. Uh, I'll go right away. But I don't... We st- don't have enough, Jim. Oh, all right, if you say so. You ought to wear a raincoat. No, I'll be uh, right back. I'll get back as soon as I can with the, with the cigarettes. Hurry, Gordon. Plenty. Did you hear the broadcast about the escaped killer? Yep. Well, there's a man at our cabin who fits that description. You sure? Yeah. He came to the cabin and he was carrying a dead man. What did the dead man look like? Well, blonde, nice looking fellow. He's dead, huh? Yeah. And we think the other man killed him. The lunatic? Yes. He couldn't have. Why? Because he was captured a few minutes after that broadcast. You must have turned your radio off right after the bullet. Oh, yes, we... we did. But, Sheriff, then, who are the men in our cabin? The men in your cabin? I'll tell you who they are. The young one was Tom Monroe. He was going up to see you. Tom Monroe? Yes. Why? To tell you that it just wasn't a wild story I told you. To tell you to get out of that cabin before it was too late. Then the other man is Jeff. Stone. I told Tom not to go, but he wouldn't listen to me. He said he didn't want any more people to die up there. And so he died himself. Sheriff, Jim and Betty are still up there. With Jeff Stone? Yes. Well, we're going to have to move awful fast to save him. Come on! so slippery. I hope we can make it up to the top. Yeah, hey, we're almost there. Keep driving. Yes. I almost didn't make it down. I got stuck once up there. We'll make her. Oh, if anything's happened to them, I don't know what I Just do. pay attention to the road. All right. Here's the spot I got stuck in before. Ah, we're not moving. Rocker, little rocker. Right. Ah, oh, no, we're stuck. We're stuck good. Then leave the car here and we'll travel the rest of the way on foot. All right. All right. Let's get out. I can see the light through the trees. Come on, let's go. All right. It's slippery. Yeah. Watch your step. Betty! Jim, we're coming! I can't hear you, not with this storm and all. Oh, I thought if he heard me. Yeah, forget it. Just watch. Are you all right? Yeah, I guess so. Here, I'll help you up. Thank you. There you are. All right, let's go. All right. And we're almost there. Yeah. I hope they're all right. We'll go in quietly. Huh? Just open the door and walk in. Right. The storm ought to cover any sounds we make. Right. And you just let me handle this. All right. Here we go. 
It's locked. We'll have to break it down. Together, then. You All go. right. Uh, well, that was Betty. Hey, we got to get that door down. All right. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Betty, Betty, what's wrong? <gasps> it's you. Well, of course. I brought the sheriff with me. Where's the man that was here? Oh, he's gone. I, I thought it was him returning when you crashed against the door. That's why I screamed it. I, I was afraid. Well, I want to be sure that... Yep, it's Tom Monroe, all right. You know this man? Yeah, he's the grandson of old man Monroe, who murdered Jeff Stone by letting him freeze to death outside. Jeff Stone's revenge is over now. But, but if he'd killed other people that came here, then why didn't he hurt us? Revenge is a strange thing, ma'am. In Jeff Stone's case, I think it was strong enough to bring him back from the grave to try to even the score. And so he killed old man Monroe over again every time someone died here. And when he killed young Tom here, then his feeling for revenge left him. Why? Tom was the last of the Monroes, Mr. Blake. Jeff Stone's revenge is complete now. Yes, sir, it's complete now. And he can rest quiet in his grave. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental.